Hi, this is Scott Schubert. Today we're going to look at a very popular indicator that's used in trading. It's been used in trading and it can be used in all the different financial markets, whether it's futures, or commodities, uh, stocks, or Forex. The indicator is called Stochastics and it was developed by George Lane in the 1950s. Well, guess what? They didn't really have computers that you could go down and buy at Walmart during the 1950s. So the only people who had access to this information in the 50s, I'm sure, were some kind of real math geeks who plotted this out on paper. And I'm sure it was very time consuming. But now you can get free charts or you can purchase professional charts and click on a, a, a button and stochastics will appear on your chart. So this is a very commonly used indicator, but unfortunately it's very commonly misunderstood. And I think that most traders don't really know how to use stochastics or what its purpose is. There's a very simple formula for how you arrive at the so-called stochastics indicator. And if you're interested in that, if you are a math geek, uh, just type in stochastics on the internet. I'm sure you can find the formula and uh, play around with that on your little calculator. Maybe you can get some graph paper and plot it out yourself if you would rather do that. But uh, if you're like most of us, I just like to look at the pictures. Uh, I don't really care what the formula is. I just want to know how can I make money if, if I can at all using this indicator. Well, the first thing that we want to consider with the indicator of stochastics is what settings should you use when you're using stochastics? So if you talk to other traders, uh, you might talk to a number of different traders and different experts. And some of them might not use stochastics at all, but if you find one that uses stochastics, just ask them, well, what settings do you use? And I'm sure they'll tell you, oh, I use such and such settings. I use 10, 3, 3, or something like that. Well, the thing is, what settings you use depends on what you're wanting to see. And it depends on what time frame you're looking at, and it depends on what currency pair or what financial instrument you happen to be looking at. There isn't really a set setting for stochastics that's general purpose for all situations. And if you're going to trade and look at charts every day, you might want to know how to adjust your settings yourself to get the result that you want. For instance, today we're going to be considering four different settings for stochastics that you can use as a starting point. All of the settings that we'll look at today are optimized according to Fibonacci numbers and you can choose one of these four settings for whatever time frame and whatever currency pair you're looking at or you can try to adjust it yourself but these are some that are optimized and were shown to me by one of my mentors who I highly respect in the in the trading industry. The first one is 833. Three. So you would ask yourself what do I want to see from this indicator? It's not just a matter of plugging in a setting and then get and then you get whatever you get. You must ask yourself what is it you want to see? You want to see the reversals in price correspond to the highs and lows in price in the past, and then that will probably happen in the future as well. So here we happen to have the euro versus the US dollar on the four hour time frame. And here is the high on this chart for this amount of time that we happen to be looking at. Here is the low right here. But maybe we're using a trading strategy where we don't necessarily just want to buy in October and then sell in the end of November. Um, maybe we want to know these intermediate highs and lows and see if stochastics is aligning with those highs and lows as well if we were to trade on a shorter time frame than allowing your trade to last for months at a time. And so this setting is a pretty fast setting and it shows all the different highs and lows every time the market even makes a slight retracement. Now one thing that we want to point out first since we happen to be looking at this is that the high, the reversal, 
when stochastics reversed in the overbought zone, it was before the high. And that's an interesting phenomenon because between this point and this point, which corresponds to this point and this point, we have what is called divergence, meaning that price was still going up while the waves of stochastics were steadily going down. And that's a well-known signal in the trading world that when you see divergence, it's almost always telling you that a reversal is in the process of happening. And isn't it very uncanny how that is actually what happened? So there's this last push up when there's a trend. During that time, this fast moving stochastics of setting of 833 was diverging with waves going steadily lower and price was going higher and then that did in fact signal that that was the top at least for the time being the market then reversed and headed down but divergence in stochastics is not really the subject that we're considering today we're considering the subject of what how to optimize your settings for stochastics so here I have marked some of the intermediate highs and lows in this chart not all of them just some of them so that you can see with this vertical line if they do in fact align with the reversal that takes place on stochastics. And as we look right here, we can see again divergence when price was continuing up and stochastics was going down and then there was in fact a very major drop in price. Back here there was divergence when price was going up and stochastics was going down and then there was in fact a very major drop right after that. So divergence between stochastics and price is a very useful signal. So that's something that you might want to keep an eye on. So as you get an idea of how these reversals tend to line up with the reversals that take place in price, here was a low right in here and there was the reversal right in here I realize I'm zoomed way out and you may not be able to see this very clearly you can zoom in you can get a better idea here was a high there was a reversal meaning the the red line crossed the blue line going down here was another high and the red line crossed the blue line well right about in that time period here was a low and the red line crossed the blue line from below about that time period and understand that stochastics cannot predict what the market is going to do other than through divergence but through the reversals itself it can't predict what the market is going to do it's always lagging and following price but if this indicator has any use to you at all, it would be within the context of understanding that it will reverse approximately about the time that price reverses, right as it's reversing, or shortly thereafter. It won't reverse before price reverses. Divergence can give you a leading indicator of what price is about to do but the actual reversal of these lines is not something that is going to be used to tell you in advance what the market is going to do. So you just want to get an idea of do these reversals line up somewhat? And this setting lines up pretty closely with what's happening in price. Now here's the same currency pair on the same time frame and we've changed the setting of stochastics to 13 five five so now we're going to filter out some of the intermediate ups and downs that stochastics is jumping all the way up and all the way down which can actually confuse you if you're trying to stay in a trend because when stochastics is jumping up and down every time there's a slight fluctuation in the market that can actually cause people to make poor trading decisions. So the setting of stochastics would depend on what you want to see. Do you want to see all of the fluctuations? 
that are happening in the market or do you want to perhaps filter some of those out so that you're not confused and distracted by an indicator jumping up and down when you shouldn't be getting in and out of a trade. For instance, well here's a low right here and if you got into the market right there you might want to stay in until it gets up here. But you had a reversal here of stochastics and it went all the way down almost into the oversold zone and went all the way back up into the overbought zone and you might want it want to have stayed in until it reached somewhere near the high. Another real limitation of stochastics is the fact that it often will stay in the overbought zone during an entire trend and make reversals and cause people to get out of a trade when they should not be out of a trade. That's one of the areas where stochastics has a great limitation and if you use stochastics at all make sure that you don't allow it to confuse you in that way. Now here's the same currency pair in the same time frame. We've changed the setting to 2188. Now we're going to filter out even more of the fluctuations in the market and we're going to focus more on the major reversals. So obviously here's the high of the entire chart right in here and it corresponds pretty closely to this reversal which took place in the oversold zone. So one of the things you want to consider is at what point in time does a reversal take place and by reversal I mean the lines are crossing and at what position on this scale does the reversal take place. Does it take place in the overbought zone or in the oversold zone or somewhere in between because all of this could have some meaning to you. So here we have the same currency pair in the same time frame and we've changed the settings to 341313. 13, 13. So we have a longer, slower stochastics and now we're focusing only on the major direction of the market and we're not being confused by all of the quick fluctuations that are constantly taking place in the market on shorter time frame. So both the slow setting and the fast settings can be useful to you. It depends on what you're trying to see. So with this slower setting we're seeing the general direction of the market. I, I just marked where the lines crossed and it looks like that happens to line up with the high when the market actually changed direction. It reversed right in here, it reversed right in here, reversed right in here. But notice that there is a lag and during this time period right here there was a reversal in price right here but it took stochastics a long time before it reversed and started up. So it depends on what you're trying to use stochastics for as to what settings you would want to use. There is another option for how stochastics can be used and that is by using two different settings. And ideally you never want to put more than one indicator channel below your price channel. Because if you do it will distort the price action and it eventually makes all price action look as if it's moving in some kind of a channel and you don't see the trends and you have no perspective of what's happening with the movement of price. So if you are a short-term day trader and you do put more than one indicator channel below the price, you really want to make sure that you're not just staring at that one chart. Look at another chart without an indicator on it. It's an amazing breakthrough that many traders never do just look at another chart that doesn't have the indicators on it so that you can see what price is doing because if you have price looking like this you can't really tell what's happening. It's just not the same signal to your brain as when you see this. So some traders use two different stochastic settings and to be able to put two different indicators in one indicator channel is just not possible with most charting programs. But here we have a slower setting with 34, 13, 13 and we have a faster setting of stochastics with 8, 3 and 3 and we can see the longer term movement, the longer term trend 
of the market while at the same time we're seeing the intermediate fluctuations and also are able to see any divergence between price going up and the faster moving stochastics going down so we can see both divergence and the longer term trend on one chart. So this should give you some idea of how you can take control of your own technical analysis and choose what settings you want to use in stochastics. Depending upon what time frame you're trading, what currency pair you're trading or other financial instrument, and what you're wanting to see. In our next video on stochastics we'll talk more about how stochastics can actually be used what its limitations are, and how you might incorporate stochastics as a part of a successful and profitable trading strategy. Until then, I wish you the best of success in your trading business.